Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Net Zero homes are on more people's wish lists than ever. And who wouldn't want a home that produces as much energy as it consumes and has low or no utility bills? Most Net Zero homes take their inspiration from the Passive House, pioneered in Germany and by Harold Orr in Canada. A passive house is a house that uses a lot less energy. The recipe is pretty straightforward. Make a tight, super insulated home that requires 70 to 90 percent less heat, heat it with a heat pump, and power it with solar. In this episode, we present Net Zero 101, our guide to the secret ingredients of a Net Zero home. When Kevin and Heather Brzezinski set out to build their retirement dream home, Kevin became quite enamored with the idea of the passive house. I guess the fact that they're, as you say, you can heat it with a candle and cool it with an ice cube. It's, <laughs> it's kind of what really drove me to want that. A passive house requires only 10% as much heat as a conventional home. Net zero homes borrow heavily from the idea. So one year in, I asked Kevin, what he likes most about his net zero home. Top three, I would say one is the comfort factor. The first time it hit minus 30, minus 35, woke up in the morning, didn't know it was that cold, looked at the thermometer and go, oh, it's minus 35 out there. You wouldn't know. That was probably my top thing. I'm like, how beautiful they are to live in. I guess this, the next thing I really enjoy is the solar panels and all your future costs for electricity and heating are no longer a worry. As for Heather, she says she didn't know anything about net zero homes when they started. She just wanted a new home with a walk-in closet. As the process went along, I really liked the fact that, yes, we don't have any heating or cooling bills. I don't have those coming in the mail. I do like the comfort of the home. And it is interesting how many people want to talk to us about what we have done. So that's kind of interesting. You meet different people and conversations. We were just speaking with our banker the other day and yes, we, she was more interested in the, our solar panels than <laughs> um, t taking care of what business we needed to discuss. More about solar later in the video. Let's get right into the recipe for building a net zero home. The Brzezinski's did some very careful research before enlisting Butterwick Construction, an experienced net zero builder to build their retirement dream home. Dave Butterwick says there are five key elements in a net zero home. Uh, the first one is air tightness. So we want that building really tight. We want to wrap up that envelope so you don't lose all the heat. Um, you know, we're shooting for about one air exchange per hour or less. A conventional home might have half a dozen holes or more um, through various things like your bathroom fans, your dryer vent, um, your hood fan, uh, kitchen exhaust here, uh, various electrical plugs and, and plumbing plugs. So your bathroom fans in a net zero home are taken care of by the HRV. Um, in the kitchen, we'll have a recirculating hood fan. Conventional homes can have five, six, or even ten air changes per hour, which means your expensive heat is literally heating the outdoors. Uh, the next most important thing is insulation, so the, the insulation in the envelope. So you we're generally shooting for R30 to R40 in our exterior envelope. Um, in this case, we have a 12-inch wall. The window is inset a bit, um, and we have it's a double stud wall system. Uh, with 12 inches of blown in cellulose in between them. Insulation forms an unbroken blanket around the home. From the R25 under the basement pad to the R40 walls to the R90 in the attic. Uh, the next most important thing we look at is high efficient windows and doors. Um, triple pane windows are a must. Um, and then we look at the frame and then right here we have a fiberglass frame. Um, we generally look for fiberglass or wood. Um, due to the low conductivity. Next on our list, uh, we have energy efficient mechanical systems and appliances, um, either a ground source heat pump or an air source heat pump. Um, here we have the indoor unit of our air source heat pump. Um, it looks just like a traditional furnace, um, it's air handler, um, but with air source heat pumps, it's three times more uh, efficient than your traditional furnace. And then next up, we have our HRV. 
Um, this is really the lungs of the house. Um, this is where we recover all that energy. So all that fresh air comes in and we're saving over 70% um, of that energy uh, through the exhaust system. And generally we use these uh, to exhaust our bathroom fans and our kitchen exhaust as well. Air source heat pumps are about 300% efficient at heating. And with some cold climate models these days rated to minus 35 degrees, they also work as air conditioners and they allow you to cut out the gas utility and the gas bill. And then the final one is on-site renewables. So generally it's solar panels and PV systems um, and that's the final key component. Kevin Brzezinski loves his 7.7 .7 kilowatt solar system, which is more than enough to power and heat his home. Absolutely fantastic. I'm looking at easily less than six year payback. I have no natural gas in this house, so that natural gas is zero. Electricity bills, I'm putting in, I'm not kidding you, I'll be putting in around $1,200 to $1,500 into my own pocket. The home also has my very favorite energy efficient appliance, the induction stove. It is our first one and I really like it. Everything cooks very quickly, the pots heat up quite quickly and the heat is nice and even. I haven't burnt anything on the stove and clean up if something does boil over is a snap. Another component to a net zero uh, building is the drain water heat recovery. Um, so this is generally used to recover heat from the drain water. 20% of the energy in a conventional home goes to water heating. Drain water heat recovery can recover 25% of that heat. So, if you want to build a net zero home, Kevin says, choose your builder carefully. I mean, yes, it's going to be more, but the justification and how long you're going to be there, it probably is, I'm guessing, roughly probably about a 10 year payback, you know, and just do it because I think it's the right thing to do because these houses are going to be here for a hundred years and there's no there's no question that it's everything should be built closer to these standards. One year in Kevin is very optimistic about short payback periods for his solar and his home but remember it's not just the payback on the extra expense you should consider your net zero home is a much better home and it's also worth a lot more as well. With wildly fluctuating energy prices and building codes slowly creeping closer and closer to net zero, expect to see many more net zero homes down the road. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.